I'd be the first to congratulate you, Dr. Stone. My compliments, Dr. Cornish. <laughs> <laughs> I got a grand surprise. What is it? John Kendi, Curie Dormitory, Hoskins University. Your letter received. Have conferred with Dean on work you, Stone, and Cornish have been doing. We'll be pleased to have all three associated with us. Arnold Research Laboratory. Well, well, where are your cheers? Well, it's a fine, fine offer, John, but I... When did you write them? Last month, when we decided to work together after graduation. But we have nothing to gain by joining Arnold Research. Nothing to gain? You mean you'd refuse the support and facilities of Arnold Research? I think Bob is right. It's our dream, our brainchild, and we three should work it out together. We went through the preliminary stages. Why let anyone else tamper with it? But they're equipped to... Well, their advantages will be our disadvantage. Our work is purely scientific. Arnold Research is a... It's a commercial organization. They would never be in sympathy with the thing that we want to accomplish. We could do in one year what would take us five with our limited means. And they'll get the credit. I'm not interested in credit. I'm concerned only with the accomplishment. I'm sorry. But you don't understand me. I'll go on alone. Kendrick has been delayed at the laboratory. He'll be here any minute now. Come in. 
Have you been able to locate my husband? No, Mrs. Kendrick. He's at the lab, but his orders are not to disturb him. Do you suppose they're waiting? Oh, yes. They always have. One of these days, they won't. Be disturbed, Dr. James. I'll tell him to come into my office when he's clear. Uh, Mr. Arnold is here. Not a bad report at all, Dr. James. The new gelatin worked out nicely and uh, I trust profitably. Oh, to show a healthy profit for us, sure. Um, uh, Dr. Wheeler's uh, uh, non fattening salad dressing seems to have caught on with the public. Yes, that'll put us in the black, too. Uh, what did Kendrick want to see me about? Well, Mr. Arnold, he, uh, he needs a new piece of equipment, uh, which he claims is most vital for his work. Look here. His full experiment has cost us plenty. And even if his theory works, I don't see how we can capitalize on it. Well, uh, wasn't it uh, your idea to keep his work before the public? Certainly, aren't we a philanthropic institution? But I am beginning to think he's entirely hopeless. And it's only a waste of money. Get him in here. Just a minute, please. Yes, Dr. James, he'll be through any minute now. <coughs> Better luck next time, Doctor. If it had the osteothermopath, the results might have been different. Mr. Arnold and Dr. James are waiting to see you. Oh, that's splendid. It's about the new apparatus. Go ahead. Get me that order, will you? Yes, sir. Waited nearly a week for the osteothermopath. Will you kindly sign the order? Well, it's uh, <clears throat> it's a very expensive apparatus and uh, useful only in your particular experiment. But I absolutely must have it. As a matter of fact, Kendrick, Dr. James and I have just been discussing your uh, pet theory. Well, gentlemen, please don't take up my time, will you? Uh, while we appreciate all the uh, time and energy that you have devoted to this... We feel uh, it's time to become practical. Practical? Well, nothing more practical has been thought of since the beginning of time. To bring the dead back to life. And you tell me I'm not practical. Well, maybe so. Maybe so. But we want this foundation to help the living to live better. To, uh, to give them better facial creams, better nail polish, better dandruff cure. Uh, all for a nominal sum. But, gentlemen, all I want is this, this, this apparatus. Yes, but, Doctor, we feel that, uh, that your experiment is a, uh, uh, dubious one and not... Uh, not a commercial possibility at all. Well, no. No, no, we shouldn't think of the reward. We, uh, we... But, but, Doctor, please, please, uh, don't, don't think that we fail to appreciate your talents. Uh, uh, in fact, I, I have persuaded Mr. Arnold that you are just the man for a research project that he is very anxious to subsidize. And one of real importance. Uh, Mr. Arnold uh, has a financial interest in a Midwest packing plant, and he needs you to help him create the finest hair restoring brushes in the market. Brushes? Yes, a very important byproduct of pigs. Pigs? Yes, bristles come from pigs. And bristles make brushes. And after the bristles have been treated medicinally by you, we have the best hair-growing brushes on the market and bound to be a big seller. But, but, but I... You'll have to excuse me, gentlemen. I, I, I couldn't, you see. I, I wouldn't know how. It's not my...
Mrs. Vandergriff, Mrs. Saddleway, Mrs. I'm afraid I can't see them. Please send them away. John. If you send them away, you're sending our livelihood away. If you're willing to risk everything for your great experiment, I'm not. We have Danny to think of. He needs us. That's my great experiment. Oh, John, I understand you. But why can't you be a little more practical? 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 Down to earth. The best brushes in the market. Is that what you want? Is that what you want? John, what's wrong? Oh, oh I'm sorry. Forgive me. You see, I had a... I had a little disappointment today. Oh, yes, the, the patients are waiting. All right, dear, I'll see them. The doctor will see you now, Miss Raymond. Oh, thank you. How do you do, doctor? How do you do? I took that medicine you gave me and I feel a lot better. What do you want me to do now? Medicine? Is there any medicine for it? Doctor! Oh, well, excuse me. Uh, what was that again, please? Why, I was just saying that I've been taking the medicine and was feeling better. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, well, I, uh... Mommy's boy, aren't you, Danny? Mommy's boy? Is everything all right? Fine. He's already seen six patients. He'll be all right. I hope so. He agreed to see them. But I'm a little frightened, Margaret. Something's happened to him. Inside. Oh, I'm so worried. I'd better get back, Mrs. Kendrick. Hello, Doctor. <laughs> How are you today? <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with me. But supposing a person had nothing the matter with them, dies of it. <laughs> what didn't she have the matter with them? Now, Doctor, I'm sure, I'm absolutely sure that the dream I had last night has a very, very vital importance. You see, I dreamt I was in a huge palace, perfectly huge, and there was a man. He was dressed in a blue uniform. No, it was red. I remember now distinctly. It was red with gold epaulets. And it came up to me, and what he said... Well, of course, if you were the doctor, I couldn't tell you this. <laughs> now, the point I want to stress, doctor, is that this man had black hair and blue eyes. And my husband, Theodore, is a distinctly blonde type with blue eyes. You simply must explain this dream to me, doctor, because I've been terribly suffering from these dreams every single night. Get out of here. You can't talk like that to me. I'll... I'll tell my husband. Yeah. You were skeptical and heartful before I began to speak. And I say to you, I'm not attempting the impossible. This is a purely scientific problem. And its scientific solution is at hand. I don't claim to be able to perform any miracle, nor do I promise, like Simon the Sorcerer, to be able to raise the dead from the grave. But do you realize that 50,000 human lives are lost each year in this country from violent shocks, drowning, asphyxiation, and similar causes? Thousands and thousands were gassed in the trenches. Now, in most of these cases, the tissue structure of the body is not destroyed. The heart merely ceases to beat. And I will have the formula that will start the blood circulating again, and with it breath, and with it life. Stop! Laugh if you must. Columbus, <laughs> Galileo, and the wonderful Madame Curie, whose radium discovery made that so-called incurable disease, a lesser evil. We're all that. I say to you here and now, when I complete my experiment, I shall be able to bring the dead back to life.
Louise. John, it's good to see you again. Did you hear my paper? No, I... I just arrived. Soon enough to hear the fools ridicule me. Don't let it hurt you, John. No, I'm beyond their ridicule. I have faith in my theory. And faith survives. So have Cornish and I. We believe in you. But let's be honest with each other, John. You can hide what's in your heart from the others, but not from us. We're your friends. We can help you. Thank you both. I don't need any help. I'm a solid alone. examinations, but I think it was a case of, uh, was. There wasn't a thing we could do.
And because the testimony of the witnesses and the investigator proves beyond contention or doubt the irresponsible and dissolute character of the parent, we respectfully request, in compliance with Article 1367, Section 7 of the State Code, Daniel Kendrick be placed in the charge of the County Juvenile Hall. Dr. Kendrick, have you anything to say? Dr. Kendrick. Do you realize that this hearing is to determine whether or not you are the proper guardian for your son? You're going to determine whether I'm the proper guardian for my own son? It has been shown that you haven't the means to take care of him. You haven't practiced for five years. And why? Because I lost a successful practice attempting to work out an experiment. And I was succeeding. I tell you, I was succeeding. But they wouldn't let me go on. They stopped me. And really, Dr. Kendrick, this has no bearing on the case. But I'll do it someday. I'll bring men back to life. He's cracked. Oh, that's ridiculous. Order in the court. This court is not interested in what you will do someday, but what you are doing today. And it is the decision of this court that until you have obtained some visible means of support, your boy shall be placed in juvenile hall. You can't take my boy away from me. You can't do this to me. No. no I tell you, you can't. Go, you can't. Go, go, go. No, no. Let me know. Let me know. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to me? Order in the court. wouldn't come within a mile of this joint. No? Well, what's his dog doing here? Scooter. Scooter. Where do you think you're going? No place. Where are you from? The west side. Who said you could come here? Don't you west side mugs know you can't come past the letter box on the corner? That's the deadline. What's this? Give me that. Give me that. <laughs> yeah, you swiped it, didn't you? No. It was my mother's. Does she know you took it? No. She... She's dead. I ran away from the cops. They were gonna put me in the home. Here, take the thing. I don't want it. But don't think that money of yours scares me. Well, I just... <laughs> Make a swell watchdog for the clubhouse. Come on, if the gang likes you, you can hide out over there. Okay.
I came in in the rain, and I'm going out in the rain, he said cheerily. I reckon that means luck. I don't know what that means, grinned another, but I know what this means. He tossed up a gold piece and pocketed it. I caught a quarter, and an hour later, Tondo rode away. Tell the guys your name. Danny Chendrick. Sit down. What's the mutt's name? Scooter, that's my dog. Where do you live? No place now. He ran away from the cops. They were going to put him in the hole. Because my dad's out of work. He's a doctor. Uh, don't give me that. Doctors don't work. Well, my dad's different. He's so good, nobody understands him. He must be nuts. Okay, save your wind. I'm chief here, so you can stay. Gee, thanks. Dr. Louise Stone, let her come in. Dr. Stone, I'm delighted to see you. And I'm to you, Doctor. Well, uh, how's Dr. Cornish? I've been following with great interest his uh, many developments in the uses of liver in anemia. It's been a most fascinating and satisfactory work, Doctor. Yes. Well, are you and Dr. Cornish uh, still pottering about on that uh, life-after-death rainbow? With all the work we've done, we've never ceased our study on that theory. It's a very high goal, but <laughs> I'm afraid it's impossible. We did some work along those lines, but uh, we gave it up. Oh, of course. You were associated with Kendrick, weren't you? Yes, we were. What's become of him? Oh, I, I don't know. We lost track of him completely after he left us, but... But I hear he's having a pretty bad time of it. Mrs. McGillicuddy, I'm very much surprised at your complaint. I've been writing this story... my dear man, I'm telling you, I opened your delivery basket with me own two hands. And there was no pies. And divil a bit of baloney. And here you've got me charged with two herrings and I only got one. I checked everything myself. My scales sometimes go wrong. But not me. It's my game. Quiet. You know, my old man's a big businessman. Oh, my dad's as good as yours. Well, he just can't get a job. Don't tell me. Doctors cure people. And that ain't a job. He's a great doctor. Only well, he was so busy with dead rabbits and mice that he lost all his customers. Mice? <laughs> he must be a rat catcher. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't eat yet. Look, I brought you an appetizer. A small terry. <laughs> Sit down. We're trying to find a job for Danny's old man. Uh, uh, uh. I picked that big piece out a long time ago. Ah, uh, you would. Say, my dad's farming at the Duffy Brickyard. Maybe he can get your old man a job. I'll ask my dad, too. He's a butcher. I got it, Danny. I saw a sign today outside of Schwartz's laboratory. They want an elevator man. That's more like it. In a laboratory. That's where my dad would like to work. I'll go tell him. I'll see you later, boys. Come on, Scooter, let's go. Hey, Dad. Danny. I got a job for you. Well, of course, it's only running an elevator. But... An elevator? <laughs> but I don't know how to run an elevator. But this is a laboratory elevator. Danny, you don't understand. Oh, gee, Dad. You... You ain't gonna turn me down, are you? Oh, I'm afraid it wouldn't work out. But you don't get the idea. I want a father. Why, everybody's got a father. Every kid I know has got one. And besides, you don't want me to... I mean, wouldn't you sort of like to have me around? Police. 
Get out the back way. Thank you, officer. Aren't you going to ask me to sit down? Oh, uh, forgive me. See, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little careless. I, I don't have much company. And... You must excuse things. See, I'm, uh, I'm very busy working on my fluid now. The formula is practically finished. That's fine. Which reminds me, Bob Cornish is putting the finishing touches to his experiment. Cornish will revolutionize the world. Oh, John, why did you ever leave us? So, you came to humiliate me with the success of Cornish, huh? Remind me that I'm a failure. John, don't let your false pride make you unreasonable. We're your friends. We want to help you. Don't you care what becomes of your son? Now, don't worry about Danny. He's all right. Yes, I know about Danny. I read the papers. How can you be so selfish? Selfish. Is it selfish to try and achieve for humanity? Humanity begins at home. Your theories about renewing life should begin with yourself. Your heart has stopped beating for your own son. Louise, stop! I'm going to tell you the truth. You're hopeless. You're nothing but a walking dream, and you can't wake up long enough to realize that your own flesh and blood leaves you. No use. I tried my best. He's hopeless. Is he still working on the formula? He said he was practically finished, but I'm sure he was evading me. He's been hurt terribly. It was just like talking to someone in another world. I couldn't get through to him. Oh, Bob, get me the alcohol, will you? Thank you. Have you enough water in there? Just a little more. Nothing else? I don't know what else we can do. His pride will block every opportunity offered him. He went about everything in the wrong way. I know. But if we could only think of something, something that would make him come to you before he's hopelessly lost. Look at all the bones we got for Scooter. Thanks, Mick. But I can't use them now. Why not? What's the matter, Danny? They're swell bones. They got Scooter. The dog catcher did. Oh, dear. Poor guy. 
That dirty old dog snatcher, he'd steal a baby's bottle of rat. I hope he gets the most. Pipe down, fellas. We gotta do something about this. Come on, let's go. Okay. 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 What's all the barking about? Well, the dogs are nervous tonight. They always get that way if we're going to have a storm. Looks like rain tonight. kind of kids they fill the juvenile hall with. And I'm going to see that you get there, too. I'll tell you that. You're running out here stupid. Don't let him get away. What's wrong? What happened? He fell off the fence and hurt his leg. We better take him home. Don't take him home. I don't even know him now. Come on, fellas. Take him to the clubhouse. I'll get my father. He's a swell doctor, the best doctor in the world. That's a peach of an idea, Danny. You go to my house. You know where I live. I can't go there. Tell my father I want him in a hurry. Go on, beat it. We'll take it. Come on, see me on his leg. My leg. <laughs> Sorry, boys. This is a compound fracture. You see, you have to set the bones. It's, uh, it's been such a long time. I, I better call another doctor. I'll get Dr. Henderson. But we'd rather have you. Was all that stuff you told us about your father a lot of bunk? You told us he is a knockout. The best doctor in the world. I... Oh, my leg.
you really a doctor? that's impossible. But you could try, Dad. At least you could try. Isn't Scooter as good as a guinea pig or a rabbit? You used to try with them. But Danny, I need help. I, I can't do it. Can't? You mean you won't? It's just like everything else. You told me you were a big doctor. I've been bragging about you to Mickey and Petey and all of them. Danny, you don't understand. A swell I... father you are. I asked you to take a job so I wouldn't have to go to their home and you wouldn't. I asked you to fix Petey's leg and you couldn't. And I asked you to save Scooter and you won't. Please don't. Leave me alone. I ran away from the cops so I could be with you. Well, now I don't want to be with you. And I'm going to the home. And I'm going there for good and for keeps. He see, it's time to become practical. We have Danny to think of. He needs it. That's my great expense. You can't wake up long enough to realize that your old flesh and blood needs you. Isn't Scooter as good as a guinea pig or a rabbit? You used to try with them. We're your friends. We want to help you. Why, he went out after you and he didn't come back. Will you come outside with me a minute? Sure. Are you all right, Sonny? Sure I am. Bless you. <laughs> Would you pass me the absorbent cotton, please? It's the white building on the corner of the uh, Eighth and Main. Right, go on, I'll get going. But he's as dead as a doornail, I tell you. Well, would you please give me the body? Sure. What are you going to do with it? We're going to try and bring him back to life. That's great. <laughs> I'm teaching these dogs to talk Spanish. Come on, you can have him. Gentlemen, instead of the experiment slated for today, it may be our good fortune to witness one that will make history. Dr. Cornish will endeavor to resuscitate a dog that has been killed by gas. Shall we start? Ready?
While Dr. Cornish and his aides are preparing, Dr. Kendrick is mixing the revitalizing fluid. Excuse me, gentlemen. The blood should be heated to body temperature. All right. I took this dog from the pond myself. Gas. The man is lifeless. Dr. Cornish and his aides will not begin until the stethoscope and watch ticks verify this. Transfers the oxygen to the dog oxygen in the medium of his own mouth. The resuscitation fluid is injected into the bloodstream. And I will have the formula that will start the blood circulating again, and with it breath, and with it life. I'm starting to sluggage. The, the heart is now beating. I'll cut the flow. Cut it off. Cut the flow off. Good stuff. Watch out for that cannula. Don't lose it. Get some gauzes now over there. Keep listening to the heart. Now hold it, hold it in. Don't pull the cannula out. You can, you can see the heart here. You can see it beating. Kind of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Go ahead to the rain. When do you pull the cannula out? Uh, Take this off? No, leave it in. Leave it in. Get over it. Now the heparin uh, keeps the blood from clotting for a long time. Please be quiet. Okay. Terribly rapid for They're just as good as ever, boys. Their blood was just what we needed for the transfusion. Oh, Too rapid. Mm -hmm. 
Everything's almost normal. I'm in. I'll get that reading. I can put it somewhere in the middle. Yes? Yes? Yes, the first guess. has assured you and rightly dog feels no pain culmination of a dream. Dr. Cornish is the man of the hour. Dr. Stone and I are merely contributors to his fulfillment. you've seen demonstrated is only a forerunner in the march of science. Its promise to humanity has been answered today. The next step is in the hands of tomorrow. 